Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy to be here again at uh, another one of these, of our bunch of these uh, mentoring of the master's program. I permanent secretary, Mr. Murray Sweet, and uh, deputy permanent secretary, Mrs. Patricia Boyce Diaz, and Ms. Ingrid Ryan Rubin, our director of culture, other members of our management staff here at the Ministry of the Arts and Multiculturalism, to our 2014 mentors, Mr. Earl Lovelace, Marina Salandi Brown, Joseph Valley, Lindy Ann Boden Rich, and Renee Cummins, and to our previous mentors from 2013, uh, members of the Diplomatic Corps, all other um, invited guests. I'm really, really happy that you are here this morning. This um, mentoring of the masters to me represents the, the foundation of, of a very serious educational principle as our director mentioned earlier, and that is the concept of apprenticeship. It is something that um, mass education has not been able to capture. And it's one of the fundamental lacking um, variable in the passing on of, of education in our society. Because in the days past, when you were to become a tailor, you would go by Mr. Taylor, and you would learn to sew. And learning to sew and learning to be a tailor isn't only about learning to sew. It is about what are the values and the principles of a tailor. So you become a tailor, meaning you become a person that embodies tailorness, if you want to call it that. And that's the idea of apprenticeship, is that it taught you not only to become, but it also taught you how to be. And so we are, I think this is a tremendous part, especially in the, in the arts and in the cultural industry, where the fundamental principle is learning from the great masters before you. And so we are happy. We are happy that um, we could bring this project and this um, concept to the country of Trinidad, to our own country of Trinidad and Tobago. This provides some safeguards that our future would be in good hands, that the next generation of movers and shakers would have the resources, not only in terms of skills, but in terms of the character. For we all know that talent is not enough. Talent abounds in Trinidad and Tobago. You turn around the corner and talent growing out of the concrete, you know? but talent is not enough. My, um, one of my advisors in, in, in art school, when I went to Columbia College, he used to remind us every so often, it is not the most talented people who, are, who succeed, but it is those who are willing to have the discipline, the commitment to adhere, to practice, and to learn most of all, who don't think that they know everything. You know, you have some people and I had a driver one time, every time I would tell him, Take it, when are you going so I know, I know, I know, I know. And very so often we'd be lost, you know. And, you know, these people, as you start talking, they say, I know, I know, I know, I know. And um, so the, the capacity to learn and to follow and to, to be disciplined, you know, to become a, a disciple of, that's what discipline means. Of course, in Trinidad, we use discipline means to beat somebody, right? But are you talking to be a follower, one who follows instructions and become like a teacher? You know, the Bible says, everyone, when he's fully taught, will be like his teacher. And that's what this process is all about, that people can grow up to be skillful. Now, if you don't have skill, then... What you'll be doing is faking it, making a lot of loud noise. And I feel a lot of people faking it and making loud noise in Trinidad. If you read a passage in Ecclesiastes, this is what it says. It says, if the axe is blunt, more strength is needed. But skill will always bring success. 
In other words, if your axe is sharp, you spend a long time beating down the tree, just making a certain noise, putting out a lot of energy. By the time the tree falls down, you beat it to death. Now you have a lot of people running up and down and making a lot of noise because they haven't learned the skill. It says, skill will always bring success. And you only learn skill by practice. First you acquire technical knowledge and then you practice because skill is the actual implementing of technical knowledge. And so you can have all the information in your head but your fingers still have to learn how to do that. This is a different thing between having any knowledge in your head, what we call technical knowledge and practical knowledge. If your finger and learn to move like this, and that can only come by doing it over and over and over and over again. For example, I play drum and I am. Um, I play drum and recite poetry at the same time. I remember the first time I was trying to do that. Those of you who are a drummer will know how, how difficult and complicated it is to talk and play the drums at the same time. It took a long time to kind of actually divide your brain in two, you know, and assign this half of the brain to, to play and assign this half of the brain to talk or something like that, you know. And, you know, but these are, this is what you learn. This is what skill is all about. It's like people who shoot arrows and they tell you you have to shoot between breath and between a heartbeat. Now, I don't even know what, when my heart is beating. But the people who do that, they could slow their heart rate down enough so that they could hear the beat of the heart and shoot the arrow between each beat. And that's what skill is. It's about becoming so familiar with your craft that you could do it with your eye closed. And not only that, you have the, the technical and the necessary information to back you up. And there are a lot of people who don't feel that they need technical knowledge. As soon as you start to talking to them, say, all the academics, all the school people, you know, and they kind of dismiss you with a wave of, your, of, your, of their hand, you know. And so we are very, very happy that we have this program that could transfer knowledge and know-how from seniors, accomplished artists, cultural workers, to up-and-coming artists in their respective fields. So this program continues to be part of the arsenal that the Ministry of the Arts and Multiculturalism has in terms of delivering quality to Trinidad and Tobago. Of course, we continue to work and support organizations that are doing good work in terms of preparing our artists to go international. We continue to work in the area of regularizing our Paniards. We continue to work in the area of bringing more performance spaces to Trinidad and Tobago. And we continue to work in the area of developing our cultural industry. Because we believe that the arts and the culture is the next frontier of capital for the development of Trinidad and Tobago. We make no bones or no joke when we say that culture and the arts will be a significant part of our economic and social development. So this year we have five mentors have been selected and they will spend 80 contact hours with program participants. Workshops will be facilitated in the areas of professional development. And we have Rene Cummings with us. Probably we should give them a little round of applause as I call their name. In terms of festival development, we have Marina Salandi Brown. Music accompaniment, Lindy Ann Rich. Heritage Preservation Through Film, Mr. Joseph Valley, And Literary Arts, Mr. Earl Lovelace. And we have areas identified also. I understand Matura, St. Augustine, Port of Spain, San Fernando. And the director explained that how they were selected through an assessment committee. And so we are clear in our mind in the Ministry of the Arts and the and multiculturalism, that our goal, ladies and gentlemen, is that young people would experience, they would know, they would gain the best of, of the creative knowledge created and um, that would be passed on to them by innovators in the field. The Ministry of the Arts and Multiculturalism, and by extension, our government, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, continues to invest heavily in the creative and cultural sector. 
because as stated in our cultural, in our policy, in our government policy, the cultural environment will free up our citizens for cultural expression, will strengthen national identity without uh, any way stifling individual expression and diversity. So it is my sincerest hope that individuals who participate in the program will seize the opportunity to incorporate the learning they receive in their lives. And in so doing, they will grow to make significant contributions to the sector and to this, our country of Trinidad and Tobago. And as I have always said, the cultural industry is the, is the best opportunity we have to engage the most amount of people from different walks of life in the shortest space of time for the least investment and the best returns. Thank you so much for coming. Bless.